So, hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome Everett, Everett Alexander here tonight. He's the founder of TEDx Huntsville, and his work has enabled so many voices to be heard and has taught so many through the publishing of TED Talks that have been filmed here in Huntsville. And so his work has been very incredible, and he'll be able to talk to us about what it takes to bring about something as incredible as a local TEDx, as well as many other pieces of wisdom that he has to provide. Welcome, Everett. Thank you. All right. Let me just get mic'd up. How's everybody doing tonight? Good boy. Everybody had a good turkey day? Or if you had, uh, you know, jerk turkey or roast turkey or maybe somebody did some deep fries or maybe you went ham or beef or uh, maybe you had some vegans out there. So you had lots of salad and potato salad or something like that. Anyway, we're good? Yeah. All right, good deal. Um, I'm going to use the board just twice tonight. And I just erased this little part here. Uh, again, I'm Everett Alexander. And we're going to talk a little bit, a little bit about everything. But who can tell me what this acronym is? Hey, Harry, yes, go. Say it one more time. Hey, Harry, yes, go. OK. And tell the good folks, if they don't know what that is, what, what is a, well, it, big, <laughs> big, hairy, uh, audacious. <laughs> audacious is, is the other word. This was kind of like, oh, you know, ask it, we could use that. But audacious is the, the term that I've heard before. But what, what is that? What does that mean? Something over the top, something really big. Something really big, OK. Big stretch. Big stretch. And it's, uh, it's, it's an idea. It's, it's almost like a mission statement of sorts. Um, and I'm going to come back to that. We're going to kind of bookmark that. Um, so, I'm here uh, about to talk about TEDx Huntsville. Um, as most of us should know, we're all familiar with TED. Are we familiar with TED? Maybe, maybe yes. not. Yeah. TED, we know what TED stands for, and it is? Technology Education Design. Very good, very good. It is not a person, it is not software, um, it's not a uh, male, female. Uh, I think I've heard just about every variation of TED and TED jokes to come. But a few years ago, uh, I was working at NASA. I was doing some uh, information security, web development, and doing freelance on the side. I had a friend call, and she was turning 40. And she was like, ah, you know, I want to do something special. I want to do a blog for my birthday. And I was like, OK, you know, that's cool. So we had a conversation. And we're good friends, and out of that conversation, we started talking about some of the groups that were here in Huntsville. And this was, you know, a few years ago, 2009. And we said, you know, there's good groups here, and, you know, this young professional group, and there's this group. And she was like, yeah, but, you know, these guys are kind of nerdy. And this one, she really didn't feel like a good fit. And this one was kind of like a dating thing, and she didn't want that. And we actually said, it would be cool if there was something where we could share ideas. And we left the conversation, and she was like, well, you know, I'm going to think about the blog, but you, you're the guy that could probably come up with something, or, or you're the guy that could pull something like that off. OK, sure. You know, I wasn't doing too much, working at NASA, wife and some kids, shooting space aliens at night. You know, not really a whole lot going on. But a couple weeks later, I came across this site, and they were talking about crowdfunding, and they had referred to a TED Talk. And it kind of clicked. It's like, OK, I remember TED. I remember going to their site years ago. And it was kind of like, we're TED, and we have conferences, and have a nice day. It was a very basic site. It was just nothing on it at all. So it was um, a guy was showing how he converted like muddy swamp water into clean drinking water and using this portable device that he created. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And so I, of course, traced it back to TED.com. I'm like, whoa, this is different. This is not what. I remember it being. And so I'm in it every day. I'm looking at how schools kill creativity and the boy that did the windmill for his village. And I'm looking at, you know, people dancing to violins and hip hop. You know, and so I'm just like, this is like awesome. And prior to my arrival, uh, Chris Anderson had just uh, acquired TED. Uh, TED has been around for over 30 years. but. They had really just been kind of keeping things in the closet. And so 
Chris kind of looked at, you know, this collection of videos, and he's like, what's the worst that we can do? Let's put them online and see what, you know, let's see what happens. Well, we kind of know how that turned out. And as they began to grow and more people started to visit the site and they really started to pick up in popularity, there was a real ping, especially from uh, outside the U.S., of, you know, how can we connect? How can we really establish some type of community? How can we really be a part of this TED movement? We're really excited. And so they came up with this TEDx program, which X is for independently organized TED event. It sounded like a real basic idea. And they initially thought, you know, maybe a dozen, 20 max groups would kind of spawn out of this. Now to date, there's well over uh, 1,500 different TEDx organizations that have spanned, you know, 130 countries. It's been over 5,000 TEDx events held worldwide. Now, you know, the numbers have just grown. Uh, it's just bananas at this point. But even at the early stages, by the time I saw that, because now I'm kind of perusing the site, and I'm like, man, it would be great if Ted would travel and they could come to Huntsville, and why not? Think big. And then I saw the TEDx program, and I'm like, you know, I'm the guy that always misses the bus. I know that there's a TEDx Huntsville already here. Okay, in North Alabama. Okay, in Alabama. Okay, in the South. And I'm looking and I'm just not finding anything. I mean, there was TEDx Atlanta, TEDx Peachtree, which is, is still in Atlanta, and TEDx Nashville just come online. And so I said, okay, let me apply. It was this long application, you know, what's your passion? What do you love? What do you don't like? What do we need to know about you? This kind of thing. And about two weeks later, the director, Laura Stein, I got an email from her saying, you have been approved for your first license. And I was like, great. Oh, crap. Now what do I do? And so I went back and I essentially curated my favorite videos and kind of made a, a semi-program and split up in two parts, but a bunch of food. And we actually had it right a block away here at 125 North Square, uh, where Jimmy John's is. Uh, used to be an ad agency there um, and uh, had it in that conference room there. And I was expecting maybe a dozen people. At the height of the day, it was about maybe 30 people showed up. They had sent it out on Twitter. A lady drove from Atlanta. And uh, it was, I was like, OK, this is interesting. But I wasn't sure, OK, what's, what's the next step? You know, what, what else can I do with this? At that time, Amy Robinson, who is a, a ball of energy, uh, she had just went to the TEDx National event and came back here and was just on fire. I mean, she was like, I've got to do TEDx on Brazil if it's the last thing I do. And of course, when she tried to register, they're like, oh, it's already registered, you know, contact Everett. So she's pinging me on Twitter. She's, we've got to meet. Let's talk. And I'm like, okay, who's this crazy girl? I'm like, okay, let's have lunch. And, you know, the meeting was like, hey, listen, let's, we're going to have at the Von Braun, and we're going to have like 10,000 people. And I'm like, okay, Amy, let's consider scale. Because the first event was only 30, and let's kind of build up off of that before we hit the Von Braun. But after that, we really hit off great. Um, we sat down, we knocked out some ideas, and we had our first major event uh, at the Jackson Center over there at Hudson Alpha. We had about 300 people and partnered with the Chamber and, and a lot of other great companies that even at the beginning, I was kind of like, I don't think this is going to happen. I mean, it was just... I mean, we're signing contracts, we're flying people in, we're bringing people up from Auburn and from New York and California, and I'm just like, okay, and, you know, the big goal was a little audacious, but I didn't want to feel like, you know, a, a jack animal, <laughs> and then didn't want to make a mistake. But the support really came in, and I remember getting that call, and somebody was like, hey, are you doing this TEDx Huntsville event? I've got a check for you, who do I make it out to? So that kind of motivated me and, and just kind of encouraged me to press on. Uh, and since then, we've had an awesome journey. It's been a roller coaster ride. Amy has since moved on to Boston. Uh, she loves the brain and, and, and just hooked up with her TED experience and her being involved in the TEDx community, which is vast and large. Um, she connected with some folks in California, which connected her to folks at MIT. And she is now the executive director of the iWire program, which maps the brain through a gaming platform. And she was just named Forbes 30 under 30 just this past year. So I think she's doing okay. Just talked to her yesterday. 
And for me, I, I really enjoy the, the connections that have kind of grown. I mean, doing the event is fun in, in and of itself. But what I really treasured, because we really had that passion about it, we said, okay, this is not going to just be a fly-by-night. So we created a nonprofit to support that. And through that nonprofit, we've been able to make greater connections. Uh, I've been able to go to the first TEDx summit, which was in Doha, Qatar. Um, so my little trip to the Middle East, got to do some exciting things out there, meet other TEDx organizers, which created a, a greater network for, for us here. Um, out of that, we, Amy and I, and it was Amy's idea to uh, create the TEDx Music Project, which catalogs worldwide all the musical performances of TEDx events. And this is only one of two pet projects that TED has officially taken on as one of their supporting initiatives. So I always tell folks, more people know about TEDx Huntsville outside of Huntsville than Huntsville knows about TEDx Huntsville. So we're known worldwide because a lot of people come through and look at the performances and it's all you know, traced back to, to Amy, which she is currently now, we just had our board meeting uh, yesterday, and she is working with Spotify and SoundCloud, and they also have another partner in Brazil that they're doing data visualization of the musical performances so that they can make a interactive platform, and they're looking at presenting that to be displayed at the Olympics that will be happening in Rio. So some cool things are going on, just from, again, a small idea. So going from, let me click this button, to ending up in Doha, ending up in Vancouver, ending up in Boston. Uh, one of the bigger TEDx Huntsville, uh, TEDx events is TEDx Beacon Street, which we've started doing adventures, uh, which is like a version of, I call it like an adult field trip. It's creating that atmosphere where people can learn more on a hands-on basis. So example is, let's say you've got a guy doing a presentation on innovation in uh, robotic, uh, uh, I said robotic, but robotic surgery, okay? So just kind of giving an example. And he gives a great talk, okay, everybody applauds. Two weeks later, we take a group, let's say of 25 folks, and we go to his office to actually see said device. So now you can interact, people can play, they can kind of ask questions. He can go beyond the 18 minute limit now. He can do a full Q&A. He's free to talk what he wants to, people can, free to interact. We have a little afternoon session. That's what an adventure is. And essentially, you can take that and you can do that with yoga, you can do that with bicycling, you can do that with architecture, you can do that with writing. I mean, it's just kind of spread out. So that was birthed out of uh, TEDx Beacon Street, which is in Boston. So we went up there to kind of learn about what they did, their best practice, that kind of thing. Um, of course, had a great chance to go to TED Active, which is the actual TED conference uh, up in Vancouver and Whistler. And my last cool trip, I was able to connect with some TEDx organizers this past year. And we connected with another group of TEDx organizers from the Asia region, which we all then descended to you know, Nevada to kind of help and support the TEDx in Black Rock City. Now, if anyone knows what happens in Black Rock City, no, nobody knows. There's a small little event called Burning Man that they, uh, have actual TEDx event there. And uh, now we are, since I've gone this past year, uh, we're looking at doing some creative uh, ideas with Low Mill and some other uh, groups here in Huntsville and opening that up to uh, do some projects here. So again, going from idea to where I am now, it's, it's been a great ride. It's been a wonderful journey. But Talking to Noah, he said I needed to leave some tips and some ideas. So that's kind of the story, but the, my lessons learned, my, my ideas that I like to leave that I think were key, one is definitely finding that right team. And, and that, to me, it applies to anything that you work on. You gotta, you gotta find the folks that, I call it the fire in the eye. If you believe it, if you wake up in the morning about it and you're thinking about it and you're sleeping on it, it's, it's yours and that's great. Not everybody is like that. And if you want that core support, now you have people that say, oh, good job, and they applaud and they do all that kind of stuff. That's, you need that too. But that core team, when it comes down to the crunch, when you're sick with the flu and it still needs to go on, who's going to pick up? 
who's going to follow through? It's that person or personnel or persons that will really come through the thick and, and make it happen for you. So you've got to find those people that are key, that are really passionate like you are. Um, also, I feel that it's one thing to, to say, you know, hey, this is a volunteer thing and, and, and we're all kind of contributing our time. And, and that's always a challenge because no one's getting paid. This is, people say, oh, you don't work at TED? No, I, you know, I have a full-time job. I do digital media. But this is something I do on the side. It's a labor of love. But then you almost have to treat it as if it's a job. And, and people say, you know, your passion is something that you do and you want to do for free. Oh, that's kind of true, but you got to balance that out because if you're doing too much free stuff and then your time is being used up, then you're not being able to support yourself. And to me, the key is there is keeping things in check with reality. Um, for me, you know, many long nights and, and, and early mornings and running back and forth might be cool for the single guy, but with wife and three kids, it can be a challenge at times. So I remember one time my wife said, if I see another red X, but you know, we, we gotta, you gotta learn how to balance, which, uh, which, which I have plenty of experience with that now. Plenty of experience with that now. So she's okay with the red X's now, she's okay. Um, another point which I, I think is critical to especially working with teams, even though you find the people that are passionate, it's still good to have differences. It's still good to, to have a different viewpoint. Um, I'm very, you know, if this is the color of the table, then this is what all the tables will look like. And it's just, I'm very simple. It's just, I'm easy, easy sell. But sometimes it might be good to have variation, but I may not see that. And as a leader, or even as a person taking charge, it's good to hear the other opinion, even when you think that you know it all or you've got the whole thing under a while. I mean, for example, let's say you like to code and you like to comment in your code. You know, you've got the table comments, you've got each little section, and you know, a guy comes in and he's just putting abbreviations and he's got his own little system. So the line in the sand may be, okay, let's all code, but then you might have to say, there's some standards that we're gonna put here. Okay, you, we might have some differences, but kind of meet at the middle ground is what I'm trying to say. But at least what I find is that if we don't have that conversation, because he just, oh, well, he comments different to me. Well, then now I've got him versus me type of thing, and, and it doesn't really boil out to be a good conversation. But if we say, well, listen, why do you do it this way? Or we need to comment this way because the client or this is how the, the database guys, you know, we can have that conversation. You'd be surprised. A lot of times, a lot of things can be solved if we just talk directly as opposed to talking about, which is, you know, we don't want to hurt their feelings or, you know, we don't like conflict. You'd be surprised. Personalities can really get in the way of business development. So going through the past few years of my life, I've really found that you know, having the, the big audacious goal might be, might be cool, but I almost subscribe to, to a new way of thinking. So I, I kind of cross that out and I, I bring a different one, which is, I call it bow. I mean, however you want to pronounce it, which is simply just be yourself and love life. You know, it's great to set up a goal and, and sometimes I, I try to have things in place that, oh, this is what I'm going to do, and, and I, until I get there, I'm not going to focus. And, and sometimes you've got to reorganize and restructure yourself. All those things are great. But I think if I was to try to plot the path that I've gone on, I would have missed it many of times. But in embracing my passion, that I think is the real key. And so whatever your, your daytime job or your hobby or whatever you're working on, your passion has to be in there somewhere. It's got to be sprinkled or it's got to be a hefty portion in there, something. Because then it just becomes just a paycheck. It just becomes you twiddling your thumbs. And so my journey has been really trying to incorporate the passions that I've learned. And sometimes you come across new passions. You come across new things by the exposure by the connections, by the community that you start to create, just like here. And by having those conversations, 
then you allow yourself new opportunities and those opportunities can lead you on great adventures. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. The next TEDx Huntsville, so we do, we do a main event in September every year. Um, it's usually, and we just penciled in September 18th um, as our tentative date. Uh, but I say our main event because we try to plan smaller events throughout the year to keep the community uh, engaged. This year has been particularly a challenge because the team that I had last year, literally half of them left. They either moved, got pregnant, or got sick, or, or just, you know, just didn't come back. And it was literally like the key people, you know, the, the core that I was talking about, they all left. And so the other people that, okay, they're going to step up and do their job. In thought, that's what I thought was going to happen, but in reality, it wasn't. And so it really made it difficult. Um, you know, Amy and I did it for a number of years, doing two people and doing a, a two, having two people run like a 300 person plus event is, is pretty unheard of in the TEDx community. Um, and I think I contributed my gray hair to that. But it's common to have at least five to seven folks, around 10 folks to have that core people because now that I'm only, I'm, okay, I'm looking for speakers, I'm coordinating the event, I'm planning the venue, I'm getting you know, all the infrastructure and logistics with food and travel and all that stuff, plus I'm doing website updates, plus I'm doing social media updates, plus I'm doing my life and my work, plus freelance, plus soccer and math club. And so you can see that as there's only so many hours in the day and you got to sleep and eat. So that just kind of cuts half the day out automatically. So I said all that to say, that we really are trying to do a rebuild year. Um, we thought about not doing one this next year, but I think we're gonna go ahead and push ahead. But in the meanwhile, we'll probably do salon events. Now, salon events are smaller events that we hold, and they can be more focused on a particular topic. So we did a couple this past year. We had one at Straight to Ale. It was kind of focused around NASA and some space stuff. Um, so we're looking at maybe doing one around art, maybe doing one around engineering, uh, some folks at UH we've been talking to. Um, and there's another one I can't recall offhand, maybe one around music, I can't, I can't, don't know if we defined that one yet. But those are the three that we're looking at. Plus we do like live stream. Um, when the TED talks uh, happen, they happen around February, March, they give all the TEDx organizations a day to live stream or rebroadcast one of these sessions. So you actually get to see Ted uncut because a lot of these videos that you see are edited and you only see probably, I would say, 40% of what's actually happening. Ted takes place for a whole week and it's from morning to afternoon. So you kind of get to see what goes on behind the scenes and, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to, to, to witness that. Do you recruit volunteers for TEDx? We do, we do. We're always looking for volunteers. Um, we. We, we always, uh, we tend to get two groups of volunteers. We call them our core committee, which plans throughout the year. Uh, we start planning usually like the first week in February for our September event. It usually gives us enough break to kind of everybody relax. And I'm always, especially as an organizer and Cassandra, my co-organizer, she, we're always constantly looking. It's, you know, I'm talking to people and that would be a good speaker. Oh, that would be a good presenter. Oh, that's a good music act. So I'm, I'm constantly planning throughout the year. But we usually start around February. So we have that core committee that we invite people to. And then we usually have the event volunteers, which maybe about a month, two months out of the event, that's like door greeters and stage hands and people running the computers. We kind of get them up to speed where you really don't need to be in all the planning sessions. but just for those immediate goals, so. Great, and um, how do people, I mean, are you just word of mouth finding people to volunteer with TEDx, or do you have, you have a website, right? Yeah, we have a website, we're on Facebook, website is TEDxHuntsville.com, we're on Facebook, Twitter, 
um, just contact us or informed at TEDxHuntsville.com uh, for volunteer information and uh, even speaker information. We're always, well, we usually do a call for speakers sometime in mid-March and we will reveal our theme and you'd be surprised, really the theme doesn't necessarily implicate what types of speaker that we get, but sometimes we'll try to look for a certain type of ideas or values or if we have something that we're trying to really pull out, we might pull one or two people that kind of support that. But our themes are usually broad enough where whoever, whatever field you're in, whether it's medical, whether it's science, whether it's engineering, whether it's art, you can still address or speak to the topic at hand. Who were your speakers this year and where did you host TEDx Huntsville? So this past year we were at Thurber Art Center. We've been there for the past... That was this, that was this September. This past September, yeah. We've been there for the past five years. Okay. Um, they're one of our, our major sponsors, uh, so they have been very gracious. Uh, we pretty much use their whole facility. Mm -hmm. um, Thurber Arts is where we hold our event. And who has not been to TEDx Huntsville? Okay, so okay, about half. Okay, so just kind of a description of, of what goes on. I'm, I'm coming back to your other question. Um, there's basically two parts to the event. We have the main auditorium where our speakers present. Uh, that goes into two sessions. We usually have a part one and then we break and then we go into a part two. Usually typically have five to six speakers per session, each going up to 18 minutes as a typical TEDx or a TED talk goes. And then the before and breaks are for what we call our interactive labs or our TEDx labs. So this is kind of like a, think of it like a trade show, but minus the business cards. We want interactive, we want engagement, so we don't want vendors coming out with flyers and papers, but we look for things that are cool, that are innovative, that can be displayed and shown. So we've had everything from rocket-powered scooters to one year we had a guy, he was doing, you know, he was swallowing swords and uh, blades and um, hedges and you know, hedge clippers, all that kind of stuff, so that was fun. Uh, we've had drum circles, uh, we've had uh, somebody had a robotic, like, moon rover type of, of robot that was controlled by an Xbox controller. Um, we've had, like, a do-it-yourself uh, photo booth that they came and had a little Arduino uh, computers running. So we have a mix of everything um, in, the, in the lab. So it allows you to interact not only with the people that are there, but with the speakers and allow you to kind of like, hey, this is cool, and then have something to talk about plus you have the speakers, and then we usually end up with a reception somewhere, and we've had a design lab at the lumber yard um, at various places. So, uh, yeah, and various speakers, I mean, we've had Howard Jacobs from uh, Hudson Alpha. Uh, he really, I mean, he nailed it talking about just the cool innovations that are coming out with just mapping the genomes. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of scary, because I'm thinking like the movie, uh, what was that? Was it Gattaca? I think it was. You just, it, it's almost like now that we can identify what's what, and, and you know, you hear all the political stuff like, oh, you know, we don't want to customize babies now, you know, but it's, it, it's, I'd say we're almost, we're pretty close. It, it's almost like if we can identify what gene is passed down, I mean, they've got it down to a science where they know that your children will have this tendency this probability of this disease and they will have your stutter. I mean, you know, it, it's almost like clockwork. And so what's to say is, okay, well, I don't want them to stutter, so let's turn that off. You know, possibilities are endless. Um, so, th but that was just one of the things that I was just intrigued by. But we try to have a real mix of <laughs> science, art, music, um, performance. This year we didn't do a lot of uh, dance performance. We usually have that at our youth event. But uh, we try to really mix it up so it, it's, a, it's a broad range. So you're not just hearing one aspect. You're not just hearing tech, 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 tech. Because a lot of people say, oh, technology, it's a tech thing. No, it's not. It's doctors. It's artists. It's students. It's regular people. So it's, we try to incorporate everybody into the event. Awesome. And so you, you charge for tickets. We do. We do. And 
do you basically break even? I mean, I, I mean, I imagine it's a lot of time and, and money that goes into you know, getting everything together and getting food and all that stuff. Do you have all sponsors for it? or We, we try to do a little bit of both. Um, we do have sponsors. Um, and then we do uh, ticket sales. Now, operating as a nonprofit and per TED guidelines, we don't make any money off the event. So we're not pocketing everything. It covers expenses, it covers venue, it covers labor costs, and we try to keep those uh, minimal. But you know, you do have you do have your costs. Uh, sponsorship, you know, it's it in in the early years it was quite easy. Uh, I don't know if I can blame the economy for <laughs> the, it's getting a little difficult now. Uh, people are not as uh, easy to to give as they have in the past. But uh, that's something that we're working on, and uh, we're even in talks with the mayor's office. He's trying to draw up some support for us as well. So we'll see what happens. Some merchandising too, right? So we some t-shirts. Yeah, we do. Mer yeah, we do merchandising. We have uh, t-shirts and mugs and that kind of thing. But that all kind of goes back into the pot to help solidify. Does, does TED, the formal organization, provide uh, support for its, you know, exes? Like, do they have like sort of guidelines for how your chapter should function and mm -hmm. branding and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know how to you know start a nonprofit that kind of thing or is the nonprofit your own twist to the TED? The nonprofit is on twist. Um, yeah, the guidebook now the latest revision is probably what 136 pages I think. It's, it's pretty thick. Yeah. Um, and that's TED and again I, I mentioned from the beginning they thought this was going to be like a pet project. It was something you know, 20 or 30 groups. They weren't expecting, you know, 1,500. It just wasn't on the radar. And so they really had to, you know, they've had some issues here and there, not with us, but just with other organizations and things popping up in the news and making sure stuff is right. Um, but yeah, they do give us guidelines. They do give us um, some structure. Uh, they do give us support at the event as far as you know what to do here's some best practices here's some things we can recommend um for those that are really hardcore they encourage you to figure out ways to be creative and again i mean our budget is relatively small i think um there are tedx organizations that you know their budget uh is running into the millions of dollars literally um but you know you're talking about there's TEDx events like you talk uh, TEDx Beacon Street and um, one in Chicago, they're doing two-day events, you know, full Saturday, Sunday, nine to six events, you know, so that's the level two license. So there's some that are very engaged. Then you have others that are very small. They might be very small in a rural village in India and, you know, they're packed out, but, you know, their requirements are very small. That was one of the cool things at meeting at Summit uh, meeting 600 other people that have your same passion, not even your job, just your passion. And it was a chance for us to connect and see how other people operated. I mean, you know, my concern is maybe trying to get funding where somebody else's concern is maybe keeping power on or if terrorists are coming through that day, you know, that type of thing. So it's very interesting to see how everyone is trying to do one event, but how different problems based on your location can affect you. So. There, there are some guidelines that they, that we try to play within and, and, and play around with, and there are some things that you can kind of expand on a little bit and, and take a risk, as it as it were. So, but they're getting a little more they're getting a little more stringent on their policy. So, yeah. Great. Cool. Any other questions? There's one. Sure. Not, not a great question, but just out of curiosity. When you have the, the TED, like the, the you have TED and you have TEDx, the TED events, I noticed, like I, I went to one of the, um, <coughs> I guess one of the salons, we did the screening. Mm -hmm. Were those official, which ones are the official TED events? Like it, it's in different places, right? Like there was a TED, like maybe Munich or something. So, right, okay, so yeah, they have, so TED was really, for the past 30, three years, four years, was in Palm Springs. I think they were in another location in California, but they've been in Palm Springs. Um, and so they recently made a shift to Canada. Now, also when Chris Anderson came on board, they started another movement called TED Global, which they started doing um, a TED event 
but it was more of an international crowd, more of international speakers, and that was based in England. That one, they're trying to rebrand. They just did their last one in Rio, and I think they're taking a break. But they've kind of moved their headquarters, not headquarters, but their operations are now going to be in Vancouver, British Columbia. So they've literally, I mean, they've built a customized uh, new venue, actually a little smaller venue, and that's where they'll be, they'll be based. So, yeah, you might see, and, and TED does, I mean, they're based out of New York, so sometimes they'll do even small events, that are TED 50 or something like that. Um, but TED is very far-reaching. I mean, you know, they have the TED Youth Program. Uh, you have TED Women. They just announced that. That happens in L.A. Um, of course, we mentioned Global. So they're very spread out. Of course, you have the TED Ed Program, and, I mean, the list kind of goes on and on. Um, also, big news, uh, Sarah Patchak, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, if you were not aware, she was just announced as a TED Prize winner for 2016. TED gives a prize to those that have a value or a belief, and so it's a million-dollar prize. Uh, Sarah is a, was a TED speaker before, but she's based in Birmingham, and she is the TEDx Birmingham organizer. Um, and so they just announced her a few weeks ago, and so she will be presenting that TED Prize next week. It's for satellite imagery of uh, like ruins in uh, Europe, in the Middle East, that kind of area, to try to preserve and see locations and see what areas need to be taken care of. So that's going to be kind of a big thing. We're going to do some partnerships with TEDx Birmingham as well, because it's kind of a big thing for the state um, to be listed as a TED Prize winner. Yeah, it's a big deal. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so well, cool. much. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank you.